Welcome back, fellow mobile gamers of YouTube, to my mobile gaming quest of finding the very best mobile games. Going through school in an era of browser gaming, before mobile gaming really became a thing, meant that I played all the great toss games out there like Burrito Bison, Learn to Fly, Shopping Cart Hero, and all the great games that released between 2004 and maybe up till 2008. 12, 2013, 14, when mobile gaming really truly started taking off and I loved these types of games but I never really understood why we haven't seen that many of them make their way and really succeed on mobile because they are, in my opinion, perfectly made for a touchscreen. But today that's all gonna change as I found an awesome new game in this toss genre called Rocky Rampage. And we'll be checking out this game today, but I also figured that I would do something that I haven't done for many, many months, maybe over a year, which is to do a quick little giveaway. Don't worry, it's not gonna be something really weird or fancy where we have to do 10 different things to participate, but I figured I was gonna give away a $10 US or UK Amazon gift card. So if you're interested in that, that's gonna happen if I actually succeed at breaking my own record in this game. So when that hopefully happens in this video, I'll be sure to let you guys know how to enter that giveaway. Now, Rocky Rampage pretty much feels like a burrito bison game if it had been made here in 2020, because one of the flaws with the old games in this genre was that they tended to be very simple, almost too simple, you know, they tended to be endless games where we had to just get as far as possible, or maybe if they did have an ending, we just had to keep upgrading our character until we could get there without any types of levels or chapters or quests or the like. But here in Rocky Rampage instead, we've got everything split into a row of different chapters in our journey. So we're in chapter one right now, and each of these chapters are then also split into multiple castles. And the goal is to capture the evil princess eventually, I, I suppose, at least this princess moves from castle to castle. So I guess that's sort of a Mario reference thrown in here. And for every new castle, the background and environment changes slightly graphically as well, which is really cool. And we're also introduced to new types of creatures that can help us get further or get more gold. Like for example, the kangaroo right here. Now the kangaroo allows us to get a few extra jumps or maybe the golden duck up here, which allows us to get some more gold if we successfully hit it. Now in terms of the controls, they could hardly get any easier. We have to perfectly time the launching power here at the beginning, of course, let's do that. That's close enough, close enough to perfect. At least the game was kind enough to tell us that this was perfect, even though it wasn't strictly a perfect hit, but that's it. Then we're off, we're flying through the air, we're rolling over these enemies on the ground and then we can tap the screen tap anywhere on the screen to do a jump if we have enough jumping power and you guys can see the jumping power boosting up over on the left side of the screen right now so right now we can't do a jump we have to wait for it to charge up which it does by hitting more of these creatures here so now we can actually do two jumps there was one well executed jump and just look at us here jumping perfectly from cannon to cannon this is how you get really far into the game you basically have to stay in air as much as you can because then you don't lose your forward momentum and you avoid hitting some of those next the enemies on the ground that sometime appear and uh, will be able to stop us if we hit them. We've also got quests, by the way, and right now we've actually already completed most of our daily quests, so the only one left is to hit Airdrop Falcon 12 times, and we've done that two times out of 12 times now. We also earned some XP, so we actually leveled up to level 8 now. That's really cool. And what leveling up and completing quests means is that we earn gold, we can sometimes earn some premium currency, or we can earn consumable boosters. And these boosters include one that guarantees a perfect launch, which is, if we click play here, it's this one, Mrs. Pocky. Then we have the energy drink, which gives us an additional jump charge. And then lastly, we've got the dynamite, which is almost like getting an additional life in this game, because when that one is activated, it gives us an additional blast when our character has come to a halt. Now, let's buy some upgrades for our character so we actually have a living chance of beating our own high score. The question is, what should we actually upgrade? I think we have to upgrade our strength a bit. Now, what strength does is that it makes it easier to destroy the walls that we hit from time to time. We have 40,000 gold to spend, so we have quite a bit to spend. I also want to upgrade the launch power here a few times. Now it's starting to become really expensive, though. So let's go for some aerodynamics, which reduces speed loss. We can also upgrade the bomb bird so that they give us more forward momentum when we hit those. Let's do that a few times. And then maybe the max speed, if we're fortunate enough to actually even hit max speed. And let's upgrade strength a few more times, and that's gonna be it. This is gonna be the setup that we'll now attempt to complete our own high score with. Before we head in for the next run though, let's quickly change our cosmetics, because yes, of course, this game also has cosmetics. As I told you guys, this is very much a game as they are being made here in 2020. So we're using the purple stars right now. They increase launching power by one level, but we also just unlocked red line, increases max speed 
by one level. I do think it's most beneficial for us in this case to have some more launching powers. I'm going to keep these ones on, but as you guys can see, there are plenty of these that we can either buy for real life money, for premium currency, or that we unlock as we progress in this game, such as, for example, let's see where do we have them. This one here unlocks at level 15 and it increases max speed by three levels. That's actually a really powerful one. I mean, upgrades now are starting to cost 10,000 and it's only going to increase more and more. So at some point, they'll start costing 50,000, I guess, for a single upgrade. So essentially getting three upgrades just by equipping that cosmetic, that's a pretty good deal, honestly. So I'm looking forward to reaching level 15, then we'll definitely start using that cosmetic. Now, to give ourselves the best possible chances of actually succeeding in our little quest here, I guess we're going to equip Dynamite, Energy Drink, and Mrs. Pocky. All of these, by the way, I've earned for free through normal gameplay. The game also does have a premium currency that we earn some of for free, and then we can buy more for real-life money, which allows us to buy more boosters, and even an inner purchase that gives us a permanent coin doppler. Actually, it increases the amount of coins that we collect four times. So that's a really powerful upgrade if you want to support the developers. That is probably the inner purchase to buy, but it is also relatively expensive coming in at just about five or six US dollars, depending on which country you live in. But thankfully, none of these inner purchases feel necessary to enjoy the game. I'm playing as a free player. I'm having a blast here. I'm really being thrown back to the good old browser gaming days and look at us go here. I really think we have a relatively good chance of beating our own high score. You guys can see that it's coming up very, very soon. So here we go. We are about to reach it. We breached the wall, guys. New record. That is so cool. Now, sometimes we also pick up chests, by the way, as we play through these games and we have to watch an advertisement to open those chests. And you'll do just fine without doing that. But obviously, if you don't mind watching an advertisement, that is going to give you a huge boost. It's going to give you some extra gold. It might give you some more of these consumable items. And actually, look at this. We're going to reach the princess here. We're going to hit the guards. We have to probably hit it once or twice more. So we have to do just as well one or two more times. And then we're going to kick that princess into the next castle. Now, we also have found an airdrop here, which is what I was talking about before. We can now watch an advertisement to open that one up. But of course, we're not going to do that now because I promised you guys a giveaway. So here here are the details. Simply leave a comment down below with the word fly in it. And then also remember to leave either your Twitter or Instagram username and I'll pick a random comment as a winner. If you win, I'll then reply to your comment and I'll message you either on Twitter or Instagram. Sadly, we have to do it this way because YouTube doesn't allow me to message you guys directly via YouTube. So this is just the way it will have to be, but best of luck to all of you guys. And thank you very much for sticking around till this point in the video. Now then to conclude on the monetization system, I really don't think it's that bad. Sure, the game becomes a bit more grindy as a free player, but the gameplay is fun, which is what's most important. And we're not bombarded with forced advertisements. In fact, there are no forced ads in this game and there's no horrible energy system either which I'm very pleased to see because I really don't like energy systems and especially in a game like this that would be a horrible system to introduce. The biggest complaint I've heard about this game is that buying upgrades only makes a really small difference but I didn't want to make a huge deal out of this as I haven't experienced that myself. In fact as you guys just saw buying upgrades made a huge difference for us and I'm pretty confident that even if this changes as we get further into the game this is something that the developers will be able to tweak over time based on feedback as the developer actually seem very responsive, which is always a good sign as well. So with that said, let me know what you think about this game in the comment section down below and let's slip right into the mobile gaming news of the day, which is good news for those cloud gaming fans out there as Microsoft is now bringing Project X Cloud, which is its streaming service that allows you to play PC games on any screen, including your smartphone, to Western Europe. So if you live in Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Spain, or Sweden, whew, and you have an Android device, then you'll be able to check out this service very, very soon. And if you're on iOS, you should also soon get access as Microsoft started testing the service on iOS devices in the US and the UK and in Canada, I think, in February this year. So assuming that things are going well with that testing, it might soon release in Western Europe on iOS devices as well. But that was all I had for you guys today. So thank you very much for watching till the very end. I really appreciate that. I hope that you'll have a fantastic rest of your day. And then until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.